do you want to start with like this concept of why the heck do we think ca cows cause climate change in the first place and why that's so uh, myopic, incomplete, and fundamentally wrong uh, at, a, at a very profound level? So yeah, so wh why, are, why, are <laughs> why does some say c conveniently that cows are bad so that it can fit their narrative? Um, cause, and then climate change would be one of those things, right? Um, so, you know, obviously, let's go, to, let's go to the climate, let's go to the carbon piece, right? Um, the reason that cows get a bad rap, um, there was a research report that was done back in like 2007, and it was on, you know, life cycle emissions, and it said that, you know, animal agriculture is one of the leading causes, or it even didn't say that, but that's how it is interpreted, and that's, what, that's the talking point you will hear. And it doesn't really matter what something says or what something shows. What matters is what people say over and over again, this day and age, right? Um, that report was debunked. It was re-released a decade later, and it showed that it had grossly over ins uh, inflated and, and stated the impact of, of animal agriculture um, on carbon emissions. Um, and we don't need to talk about why carbon actually is is bad in the, in the atmosphere right i mean i think i think people get the idea that it reflects heat and it makes it causes a warming effect and the degree is somewhat um you know well well written out you can you can google it it, it, it says it pretty quickly but with cows in particular a huge chunk when you when you when you take this this straw man cow right the one that they want to really prop up and they want to say how terrible animal agriculture can be it is something along the lines of this animal relies li lives in a feedlot and it relies on uh grain or soybeans or corn that was grown in colombia on land that used to be rainforest right i mean we're talking about again raising rainforests and then growing crops using tons of chemicals and uh, petroleum and then transporting it and by the way transportation is the number one <laughs> emitter of carbon and the transportation industry loves pointing at the meat industry um, and then bringing it here and then having animals in confinement and yada 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 right and then you get into this idea of enteric emissions which is essentially burps uh, and to some degrees uh farts uh and methane right and so all of these people are pointing to you know this again this scenario and and and, and it's it's fair to an extent because much of our meat comes from, and at least in the united states comes from that system right and that's fundamentally at force of nature what we're opposed to and why we're trying to return animals to the land they co-evolved to perform keystone environmental services on eating the diets that they evolved to eat and exhibiting the behaviors that they evolved to exhibit to become healthy animals that become healthy food because it takes life to sustain life. Um, so, you know, carbon, again, worst case scenario, lots of transportation going into to that meat. You got these enteric emissions, these burps that create methane and methane's bad. Um, and then, um, you know, you got a bad cow, right? And I think the, the life cycle assessment of that most conventional industrialized uh, piece of, of, of beef is like 33 pounds of carbon per pound of meat emitted. And I think there's a lot of liberties in that report. Um, I don't know that, you know, I, I'm sure we could poke holes in it, right? And then you compare that to something like corn or soy, and it's like three to four pounds. Uh, of carbon emitted per pound produced. So they're like, oh my gosh, it's, it's way worse on the carbon, right? But again, when we talk about the meat that, that, that we're sourcing and the systems that we're promoting, it's negative three and a half pounds of carbon per pound. It's actually pulling carbon out of the atmosphere, sequestering into the soil where it used to be and where it belongs and keeping it there, which actually promotes a series of amazing and good things, right? So um, we probably should could, should explain why those some of those carbon concepts and you know the, the bad cow like why why we're not seeing that in, in in the good system right yeah and i just want to point out so what robbie's referring to is an fao report so just to give you guys ammunition in your arguments with vegans or plant-based people or just your fan friends and family who are saying well i saw a documentary that says eating meat is bad for the environment the numbers that robbie is talking about in terms of Life cycle emissions for ruminants are from an FAO report that was done, I believe, in 2007 or 2009 and then redone in 2016. There was a, a debunking or at least a reconsideration of that report called Livestock's Long Shadow, in which the math was called into question in a major way. And so 
The main problem here with FAO report is that they are looking at worldwide emissions of ruminants, worldwide emissions of cows, when they broke down animal agriculture into like cows versus other animals, worldwide emissions as a fraction of anthropogenic emissions, and they're looking at cows in a life cycle, so how much uh, methane in terms of carbon dioxide equivalents a cow is emitting during their life and comparing the life cycle of a cow to just what comes out of the tailpipe of a car and other transportation. And so when you see the figure based on FAO reports that a cow uh, produces as much carbon as transportation or as a car, that's completely false. That's apples to oranges because you're not comparing the life cycle for the car. And many people ask me this question. Say, they say, how can the 2016 EPA report, the Environmental Protection Agency, show such different numbers? These are things that I have in my book, The Carnivore Code. If you look at the 2016 EPA report, it's more apples to apples. It's tailpipe to tailpipe, quote unquote. It's saying, okay, what are the actual enteric emissions from a cow or from other animal agriculture versus what are the other, quote, enteric emissions from your car? And they're not looking at the life cycle because nobody has done a life cycle analysis of carbon emissions of cars. It doesn't exist as far as I know. And so conveniently, the FAO and plant-based interest groups that are trying to smear cows will use enteric, uh, or will use life cycle analysis of cows and compare it to just tailpipe from cars. But if you compare tailpipe to tailpipe, right, what you end up with is cows looking a whole lot less culpable. Yeah, well, and, and again, to your so, so it's debunked. It's false. It's been corrected. There's a lot more nuance to it. We can go. I could talk for another hour on methane and why even the treatment of methane is absurd. Um, just say a word about when that. You, when you, well, just this, 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 this one point, though. Despite all that, it is more convenient to fit the narrative of cows are bad to go back to the 2000 flawed report, the 2007 report, right? And so that is what continues to perpetuate, right? Because it fits the narrative. It's a story that people, it's what people want to believe and what they, they want to hear what they want to believe. So that's what continues to, to be parroted um, in these documentaries, among, among other things, right? Enteric emissions, um, again, we've, we've talked about that, burps and farts. Methane, um, what is that, CH4, so it's a carbon um, gas. It is a greenhouse gas. Um, the thing that, you know, people always know about CO2, it's got about a thousand year half-life in the atmosphere, give or take. It takes a long time to break down. So when you get CO2 load in the atmosphere that's greater than historical load, you know that it's going to be up there for a while and it's going to take a long time for that to, to work through, especially if it's coming from, from deep carbon and other stuff. Um, methane is much worse than CO2 in terms of its greenhouse gas heating properties but it only lasts about 10 years or its half-life is about 10 years. And so it starts coming down really quick. Uh, and that's critically important in the conversation of biogenic carbon emissions, which are the carbon emissions that occur naturally, like say from termite mounds or in swamps or from burping <laughs> and farting, um, that it doesn't last very long. So as long as you have a consistent population of cows emitting methane, and you have methane going up and coming back out of the atmosphere at a consistent rate, the actual net load of methane isn't changing, right? Um, so the capacity or the ability for it to do the harmful things in the atmosphere that it can do isn't necessarily worsening. Even though there's new emissions occurring, there's a massive and equal number of drawdown of that emissions, or exp exp we'll just call it expiring emissions coming down. And then I think secondarily, you know, again, in the biogenic cycle, Methane is an emission of methane through these enteric emissions is natural and there are other counterbalancing forces that are natural to address that like like methanotrophic bacteria that actually help with some of that cycling of methane or in, in or other environmental things that you'll see again around a termite mound or in swamps. I mean it is it is necessary and part of the natural environment and natural processes to address this. So that's actually a, there's a huge in those in this calculus that we're talking about even demonstrating favorable figures for meat, I don't personally agree with the way methane is treated. I think it's punitive to our argument. And if we took a more practical approach to how we talked about and spoke about that, even in our own life cycle assessment, we'd see that the carbon drawdown is significantly greater than even the three and a half pounds um, that we're pulling out of the atmosphere if, if, we, if we treated methane fairly. And I, I love that you pointed out a couple of things people may not be aware of. When you are talking to someone about the environment, ask them about methane. See if they understand that it's methane versus carbon dioxide and that carbon dioxide is then 
inspired by plants and becomes carbohydrates and actually makes the world function. If carbon dioxide were not in the environment, we would be all living on a 30 degree surface of the earth and we, none of us would be alive. And the carbon dioxide that's in the environment is the, the, it's what plants inspire and they then fix it into carbon dioxide. And as you mentioned, methane coming from the burps and farts of cows is not the only methane going into the environment. There are many other natural quote sources of methane, like you said, termite mounds, bogs, swamps. Methane has always been going into the environment uh, throughout the history of the earth. What is that, five billion years or so? Uh, and this has always been happening. Uh, I don't know if there's been bogs on the earth for five billion years. The atmospheric composition has probably changed in the <laughs> five billion years. A little bit, yeah. But you get the idea that, that there are other emitters of methane. And if you look at the numbers, cows are not the largest emitter of methane on the planet, or nor are ruminants in general. There are other emitters that are larger, and I believe that landfills, our trash as humans, is a substantial, if not the single greatest contributor to methane in the environment. So when, the, when this anti-cow argument advances its points, if they really wanted to get rid of all the methane, they should also exterminate all the termites in the world. They should also pave the ocean floor because some methane comes from vents in the ocean floor. They should pave all the swamps and turn those into strip malls because that's where we're going to need to buy our Beyond Beef or other, you know, other apparatuses, to apparati to make us healthier humans. Uh, something like soil and green or something. And, uh, and they, we should definitely eliminate and exterminate all the animals on the planet and there would be no methane going into the planet and we would all be dead. Certainly, there would be no life on this planet after that occurred. And then we should also all probably commit ritual suicide because all of our trash is promoting landfills. And so I guess, I guess what's happening is these plant-based advocates are looking at those things and saying, well, cows are clearly the worst promoter. That's what we should be going after. When in fact, these are a source of incredible nutrition for humans. And as you're suggesting, when raised properly, actually can be a part of an ecosystem and draw carbon into the soil and pull it out of the environment.